Why, hello there. Welcome to Working with Python's built-in exceptions. My name is Joseph, and I'll be here to shine a light on the dark, cobwebbed recesses of Python exceptions. As coders, we're all familiar with exceptions and errors. Maybe we fear them, maybe we seek to avoid them at all costs, or maybe we hope to handle them. But while any error can mean the sudden end to your program, not all errors are made equal. By understanding the variety of built-in exceptions available in Python, you can, in turn, understand the nuances of the situations in which they occur. And this is essential for writing effective, resilient production code. Throughout this course, you'll learn the actual differences between what we consider errors versus exceptions, techniques for both handling and raising exceptions in your code, how to navigate Python's hierarchy of built-in exceptions, when and where you'll encounter the most common exceptions, and how understanding built-in exceptions can help you write more maintainable Python programs. While we will be diving deep with explanations, some background knowledge with Python concepts related to exceptions would be beneficial. Concepts like object-oriented programming in Python, classes and inheritance, try except blocks, and the raise statement. Also, this course is specifically about understanding the different types of exceptions built into Python. If you want a deeper refresher on errors and exception handling in general, check out Python Exceptions, an introduction. And one last note before we get started. I'll be using Python 3.13 in this course. Starting with Python 3.10, error messages have become a lot more detailed. So if you're watching this using an older version of Python, you may not see as much information on your screen. And if you're using a future version of Python, well, you might see even more detail. Or far enough in the future, maybe AI fixes errors for you or something like that. But for those of you not yet living in that utopia, well, follow me to the next lesson where we'll break down errors and exceptions in Python. So what is it exactly that distinguishes errors from exceptions? In casual language, these terms tend to be used interchangeably. But I say, let's get technical. So errors are concrete conditions in your code, hard-coded and static. They typically result from making mistakes with syntax or logic, like a mistake in the design of a function. And they prevent your program from running correctly or running at all. To fix an error, you can update the erroneous code. Meanwhile, exceptions, true to their name, happen in exceptional situations during runtime. They result from invalid or unexpected conditions. And it interrupts program execution when these unexpected situations occur. And because unlike errors, they aren't mistakes in your code per se, you should either handle them using try and accept or prevent them by validating conditions before an exception can occur. It's kind of like the difference between building a car and forgetting to include a steering wheel, which I'd consider an error, versus having a car whose engine overheats and explodes on a hot summer day in traffic on the way to a trading card tournament. An exceptional and true story. And now let's look at a couple examples to illustrate these differences. Go ahead and open the Python REPL. A common mistake leading to an error would be to confuse the assignment operator and the equality operator, single versus double equal signs. So for example, Use the len function to get the length of the string pythonista and compare that with the integer 10, but use a single equal sign instead of the double equals. len pythonista equals 10. And the result? Syntax error cannot assign the function call here. Maybe you meant double equals instead of single equals. Again, a super helpful error message here in Python version 3.13. And the fix is simple. Use the correct operator. len pythonista equals equals 10. And the result is true, since Pythonista has 10 letters. Another easy way to tell that this is an error is that you know just by looking at that one line of code that it's incorrect and will not run. To see an exception, start by defining a couple variables. Numbers equals a list of the integers 1, 2, and 3. And position equals the integer 5. And this is the situation you're working with. Try to access the element of numbers at the index of position numbers at position. And what happens? You get an index error, list index out of range. Since there are only three elements in the list, there is no element at index 5. And yes, it is called an index error, not index exception. For consistency's sake, most exceptions in Python are named error. And how can you tell that this is an exception and not an error? Well, 
because there's nothing inherently flawed with the line numbers at position. In fact, the index error is only raised when Python tries to access the index that doesn't exist while the code is running. And a way to fix this would be to handle the potential error using try and accept. Try accessing numbers at position, accept index error, print the string, index does not exist. And when you run the code, you get index does not exist. Because an index error was raised in the try block, it was caught and the accept block ran. And if this is still a little confusing to you, definitely have a look at the tutorial referenced in the previous lesson. And with that, basic definitions are out of the way. Next up, we'll pull back the curtain on Python internals and examine the exception class hierarchy. See you there. As of Python 3.13, there are over 60 built-in exceptions. They represent errors and exceptional situations. Some can be encountered and raised directly, and some are used as base classes. And don't forget, Python is an object-oriented language, so all exceptions have their place in the exception class hierarchy. Here's a diagram of the class hierarchy. I couldn't fit 60 plus exceptions on this slide, so these are the highlights. The exception class hierarchy starts with the base exception at the top, which all exceptions inherit from, and from there can be broken down into four sections. First are the base classes. These are usually used as parent classes for other exceptions, but a few of them are raised in specific conditions as well. More on that in a minute. All other exceptions inherit from the exception class. You have the concrete exceptions. These are the main exceptions you'll encounter in Python, and you can also use them as base classes for your own exceptions. Both of the errors encountered in the previous lesson were concrete exceptions. There's also a group of exceptions known as OS exceptions. These exceptions inherit from OS error and represent exceptions originating in your operating system, with Python passing them along to you. You'll typically need to handle these exceptions and won't be raising them directly. Finally, there's a group of exceptions called warnings, and they inherit from warning. True to their name, they warn you about events or actions that could cause errors in the future. Let's look at the base classes in more detail. The base exception group can be used to create an exception group that wraps any exception, not just exceptions inheriting from exception. Generator exit is an exception that occurs when a generator or coroutine is closed. A keyboard interrupt is raised when the user inputs the interrupt key combination, which is typically control C. System exit can be triggered by calling the sys.exit function within code or can be raised directly by its name. And of course, in addition to what you saw in the hierarchy diagram, exception should be used as the base class for any exceptions that you define. One more thing, let's address warnings. Distinct from other exceptions, warnings do not halt program execution. What they do is warn you about potential errors or unintended side effects. And this gives you an opportunity to update your code before library authors introduce breaking changes, which would lead to errors. And in the context of where your code is running, you usually have the option to suppress or filter warnings as well, effectively hiding them. And while you can do this and ignore them, it is best to follow their directions and update your code accordingly to avoid running into trouble further down the road. You can read more about the different types of warnings you'll find in the Python documentation. For now, why don't you pop open the REPL and I'll show you a brief example of a warning you could encounter using Python. Open the REPL. This example uses the built-in calendar library. In Python 3.13, the title case January constant from that library is deprecated, meaning it'll be removed in a future version of Python. So if you import calendar and access it, it still works, calendar.january, and the output is the integer one. But along with the output, you get a deprecation warning, letting you know that title case January is deprecated and you should be using uppercase January instead. And when you encounter a simple deprecation warning like this, it's always a good idea to address it right away. All right, I think that's enough theory. Coming up next, our tour of built-in exceptions begins with the humble syntax error. When you start learning Python, the first kind of error you'll run into is usually the syntax error, which naturally results from incorrect use of Python syntax, the rules of writing the language. For general syntax errors, the syntax error is raised but there are a couple subclasses for specific situations. The indentation error and the tab error. Let's explore all three in the REPL. 
For a fairly common example, let's look at what happens if you define a list but forget a comma. Numbers equals the list 1, 2, 3, 4, but missing a comma between 3 and 4. What happens is, of course, you get a syntax error, invalid syntax, and the very helpful message of perhaps you forgot a comma, which you did. And how about if you try to do something else, like assigning a value to a reserved keyword? Class equals the string economy. Again, you get a syntax error or invalid syntax because reserved keywords are not valid variable names. So that's pretty straightforward. What about indentation error? This one can be a little tricky. Python has what's known as semantic white space. The indentation level of each line is meaningful and not just a way to organize code, like in languages such as JavaScript. So if the indentation level is inappropriate, that would be a kind of syntax error as well. Thus, the indentation error. To illustrate, write a function, hello world, that prints hello on one line and world on the next. Def hello world, and see how, by default, the cursor is positioned four characters into the next line. Print the string hello. Now for the following line, try reducing it to two characters and print the string world. Complete the function definition and what do you get? Indentation error. Unindent does not match any outer indentation level. This happened because you reduced the indentation from four spaces to two, which makes no sense in the context of the function. This would be quickly fixed by adjusting the indent. All that leaves is tab error. Officially, Python recommends using spaces for all indentation in your code base, but for historic reasons, tabs are also supported. It's only when you mix tabs and spaces that the tab error will be raised. But raising it is actually a little tricky. Modern code editors will typically convert tabs to spaces and vice versa, depending on the settings in your environment. In fact, in Python 3.13, even the Python REPL converts tabs to spaces. First, close this REPL session. And to see a tab error, you'll need to use the old Python REPL by setting the environment variable Python basic REPL to one when starting up the REPL. And you can define another hello world function, def hello world, and counting out four spaces, print hello, one, two, three, four, print, hello, and using a tab, print world. And as soon as you try to go to the next line, there it is. Tab error, inconsistent use of tabs and spaces and indentation. The great thing about syntax errors is they're usually a pretty quick fix. And as you gain mastery of Python, it only gets easier. This was just a couple of the ways that you can encounter them though. For a more thorough exploration into syntax errors, check out Invalid syntax in Python, common reasons for syntax error. And the next lesson, you'll look at the ways that names and imports can lead to exceptions. There's a few different ways that accessing names in Python can trip you up. If you try to access a variable name that isn't present in a given Python scope, you'll encounter a name error. On the other hand, if you try to import something and it can't be found, you'll either get a module not found error or its more general parent class, the import error. Let's see some situations that can trigger these exceptions. Open up the REPL, and a name error is easy to generate. Try to access a variable name that doesn't exist, like Bob. Indeed, name error, name Bob is not defined. A more realistic example would be accessing a library that does exist that maybe you forgot to import, like trying to grab the path attribute of the sys module sys.path, and a much more helpful error this time, name error, name sys is not defined, did you forget to import sys? The module not found error occurs when you ask Python to import a module and it can't be found. This happens most commonly when you've forgotten to install the module prior to running the code, or perhaps you've misspelled the module's name. Try to import a non-existing module uh, named non-existing. Module not found error no module named non-existing. Now, this error only covers the cases where the module you're importing or importing from can't be found. All other cases of failed imports fall under the more general import error. An important distinction for you to consider, especially when it comes to handling these exceptions using try accept. To see an import error, you can try importing something that doesn't exist from within a module that does. 
from sys import non-existing. And there's the different import error. Cannot import name non-existing from sys, unknown location. For a practical example, you can use module not found error to identify when a module is missing and dynamically load a different module at runtime. If your program needs to parse a TOML file, for instance, you could use the built-in TOML lib module in any version of Python since 3.11. But if you try to import TOML lib and get a module not found error, you can use try and accept to instead import the third-party library, Tomly, which would of course need to be installed as a dependency. You could do something like this. Try, import Tomlin lib, accept module not found error, import Tomlin as Tomlin lib. Either way, you end up with a Tomlin parsing library assigned to the variable named Tomlin lib. Of course, this only works if the two libraries have more or less the same API, but you get the general idea of what you can do with this. And if these examples have made you a little more curious about how imports work generally, head on over to Advanced Python Import Techniques for a deep dive. It's import and info for sure. And if you're still with me after that pun, I'll see you in the next lesson, where you'll look into, look up related exceptions.